everyone. Y'all don't mind me and how I look, okay? And daily devotion. We're going to be in John chapter 8, verse 12 today. You know my, we all need your peaches, peaches, and I just been here praising God on this glorious Monday morning. It's a new day and a new week. Okay? So I gotta praise his holy name. We all need your grace and your mercy. We all need. Oh, I need you to hold me. I need you to hold me close. I need you to hold me close. Don't mind my voice either, cause it can't get there some days. Some days is there, y'all. Okay. Some days is there. But let's go ahead and get started. Oh, oh my life. Oh my life. Oh, so good. I needed this small little praise. I used to love that song, Saints and Sinners by Monica. Mm. Oh, I look at the filter on Instagram. I look cute. And then I look at myself on Facebook. And I'm like, oh, I need to go take a shower. I still need a shower, y'all. I just was running around. And then I had to clean my car. I'm like, no, I need to read my word and, and listen to this word real quick. And do the daily devotion with you guys before I even do anything else. Because I thought, I was like, okay, this could be a midday pick-me-up for people since I didn't do it in the morning. It could be a really great midday pick-me-up for a lot of people. Um, where is my other book? Okay, so we are going to be in John chapter 9, verse 12, okay? The light and darkness. So it's a real short verse. Let's get into it. Jesus is the light in the world. Yes, he is. Can I get an amen for that? Jesus is the light in the world. It says, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Wow. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you have the light that leads to life. Is there any of you guys who are walking in darkness right now? Like really ask yourself, are you walking in darkness? Like I said, I, I've been tested these past few weeks, just constantly being tested, constantly being tested and I know that I have light because I have Jesus Christ in me, right? Because I have Jesus Christ in me, I have this light where I'm still able to permeate that light onto other people and people not even realize that I might be going through some sort of test because really and truly the test is what builds my endurance. The test is what makes me lean onto God even more than how I usually would lean onto him. The test is what allows me to... Um, to, 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 to meditate on the scriptures and the promises that God has already told me. So if you feel like you are going through some sort of darkness, you have to remember that Jesus is the light of the world. So in order for you to get this light and get out of this darkness, who do you need to run to? You need to run to Jesus. You need to run to our God. You need to run to our Savior because he will be that light for you. It says here, to understanding what Jesus meant by the light of the world. See note one, four through five. Okay. It says that, it says that, oh, I want to, I want to read those notes. Hold on. Cause y'all know me. I like to, when I, when I'm studying my Bible, I like to go and look at those little notes because that's some good stuff. I need you to talk and I need you to walk. Okay, so C note one, four through five. Okay, so it says here, it says that, 
It says, to understand what Jesus meant by the light of the world, let's read um, notes one from verses one, four through five, okay? Because there's only one scripture today, guys, but this is a very, very powerful scripture, especially, like I said, if you've been just going through a dark time and not realizing that there's so much light and that light is Jesus Christ, you will start receiving that light and you'll experience that light when you get to know who he is. So when you're going through some dark time, what does that mean? Get into your word. Get to know who Christ is. It says it right here. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in, walk in darkness because you have the light that leads to life. All right. So it says, what does Jesus mean by that light? It says that the darkness, the darkness can never, the darkness can never extinguish it. The darkness can never extinguish it means the darkness of evil never has and never will overcome God's light. Mm. Mm. The darkness of evil never has and never will overcome God's light. That right there, y'all, should just make you scream for joy. Make you so happy. Make you so pleased. Like, what? Okay. That right there makes me so happy. That's a truth, right? That's a, a, a biblical truth that you can fall on. Okay. It says that Christ is the creator of life. And his life brings light to humankind. In his light, we are ourselves as we really are. Sinners in need of Savior. That's who we are. Sinners in need of Savior. When we follow Jesus, the true light, we can avoid walking blindly and falling into sin. He lights the path ahead of us so that he, he, he lights the path ahead of us so we can see how to live, right? He, he lived the whole path of head ahead of us so that we can see how to live, right? He removes the darkness of sin from our lives. In what ways have you allowed the light of Christ to shine in your life, okay? It says, let Christ guide your life and you will never stumble into darkness. Ooh, amen to that. So like I told you guys, like when I, even though I've been tested, these past two to three weeks i'm still walking in so much light light that permeates through you know people's lives and i give all the glory to to god for that light that i'm able to permeate because though i'm getting tested i'm not walking in any sort of darkness because jesus and christ, you know christ is within me and when christ is within you you have this light Okay, that is the, that is a truth that you need to fall on that you don't know you no longer have to be in this darkness that you think that you are in. Remember the light is Jesus Christ. If you feel like you're in the dark and you need that light, guess what? Get into your word. Okay? Get into your word. Get into your word. All right? Now let me get back to the scripture. Um it says, Jesus was speaking in the treasury, the part of the temple where the offerings were put and where candles burned to symbolize, to symbolize the pillar of fire that led the people of Israel through the wilderness. That's in Exodus. It says, in this context, Jesus called himself the light of the world. The pillar of fire represented God's presence, protection, and guidance. Likewise, Jesus brings Jesus brings God's presence, protection, and guidance. Is he the light of your world? Ask yourself, is Jesus the light of my world? Because if Jesus was the light of your world, guess what? You would understand that you are in the presence of God, that you are getting this protection from God, that you are getting this guidance from God. And I'm so, 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 so grateful for that social media fast because that social media fast helped me um, when it came to just falling on my truth and, and, and receiving revelations, because that's what it was. There was so much revelations that I received during the fast. But also, even with the scripture of what Jesus saying that he's the light of the world, you got to ask yourself, is Jesus the light in your world? Right. So like I, like I was just talking to a friend recently and a couple people, actually. And I was telling them about how I've been going through these tests. Right. But these tests don't phase me like how they once phased me, 
right? They don't phase me like how they once phased me when I first started my spiritual journey. They don't phase me as much as before I even accepted Christ as my savior. Back then, I was leaning so much on my own understanding. I was depending on my own self to get through the valley, not knowing that, you know, um, God will walk with me through the valley to get me to the other side. I was just so busy on doing all of it on my own. And because of that, I didn't have this spiritual endurance. I didn't have this faith that was inside of me. And so I didn't have the light, right? And because now that I receive the light and I have the light, right? I have God's protection. I have his guidance, right? Over my life. You don't have to be in darkness, guys. You do not have to sit in darkness. You don't have to live a miserable life. You don't have to be worried about all these things. Like I was speaking about on my life today, I've been so meditating on the scripture of Philippians uh, 4, verse 6 through 7. You know, do not be anxious for nothing. But by prayer and supplication, you know, let your request be known unto God and thank him and he will give you peace. Like he will truly give you peace if you allow him to be your light. If you're missing the light in your life, that means that you have that you're missing the main factor. And the main factor is knowing who God is and knowing who Christ is and what Christ did and what God's promises in our life. But the only way that you're going to know that is by being in your word, being in your word. Being in your word, and I can't stress that more enough, okay? He is the only one that can depend, that can depend and turn to you and it's too much to bear. But amen. Right? And um, I, I don't know if I was talking about this on my live or if I was talking to a, to a friend. But I was saying, like, in the, the social media fast, I had learned from Tatum. Like, you know something is a God idea when you solely, only rely, when you solely have to rely on his strength in order to get through making the vision clear right when it's an idea that's coming from you you don't necessarily have to rely on him because you're doing it in your own strength and it's like you can do it in your own strength so it wasn't really a god idea so like when i think about my tour that i'm on right now with every single stop every single stop i have to give it to god because he's the one that's going to handle and take care of the situation like it's, it's about almost impossible for me to do it on my own right it's impossible for me to, to do all the stuff that when it comes to even the financial aspect of it to do it on my own. So with, since the, store, the tour started even before then, I was solely relying on his strength to get through it, right? And I was getting a little frustrated because I'm just like, was getting anxious about the entire thing until I realized and watched that episode of what Tatum said that if it's a God idea, it's something that you keep relying on God for to get to you for every single thing. And I'm like, oh my goodness. That's why, because most of the ideas that I get are from God, right? They are from God. Um, it was a 15-day social media fast that we did with the Blessed and Bossed Up Society from August 1st to the 15th. And then we did a food fast on the 1st and 15th. Um, so, yeah, you always want to do social media fasts every once in a while because the goal here is to disconnect. But also, we have to remember as, as followers of Christ... Our goal is not to be influenced by the world. We shouldn't be caring about the things we see on social media. The goal here is to be influencers of the world. We need to be the ones that are influencing the world. What are we influencing the world by? What are the things and the information that we're putting out there, right? So that's what the, the purpose of the social media fast was, is, was for us to disconnect and to get revelation for our businesses and to know what it is that God wants us to put out there so that we can be the influencers of the world and not be influenced of these things of the world. Just like the scripture says, do not be conformed by the things of this world of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. OK, you don't want to conform to these things of the world. OK, like at all. Um, I was just recently talking to a friend. Right. Because it, I, if you all have been keeping up with um, Pastor Todd, he's doing the Forgiveness University um, sermon right now um, series. And I was um, talking to a friend and I was like, um, I was thinking about the story of Paul, right? Because I'm I'm in Acts right now. And Paul, who was once known as Saul, he used to be a persecutor of Christians. And he would just persecute Christians all the time. And he did a lot of stuff. And then um, he had this encounter with God one day. He heard the voice of the Lord. And he was with some people. And he became blinded. And when he became blinded, the Lord said to him, I'm going to have somebody um, that's going to come to you. And he's going to give you your vision back and then Saul got his vision back and 
it took all that work it took him literally to become physically blinded for him to really see who god was and from that moment paul completely gave his life over to christ and he's he became a missionary for god and started planting churches all throughout jerusalem right so when he started this everybody was looking at him like who are you to be a follower of christ now when you were the ones bashing all christians you were the one persecuting us you were the one doing all of this and saying all these things and all this stuff but you have to remember just like god forgives and just like jesus forgives we have to learn how to forgive people when i was listening to the sermon um pastor todd's sermon he he said something that gave such revelation to me it was like how can you not forgive something how can you not forgive someone that god has already forgiven right somebody might do you wrong but they're already forgiven by god so why would you hold on to this judgment or this grudge on somebody that god has already forgiven it's only going to hurt you in the end because the person that you're 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 battling with for not forgiving is living their best life doing whatever they want to do right they've already been forgiven by god and you're the only one that's holding the grudge to them and the reason why i'm saying this because back to what i was saying don't be conformed by this world but be transformed by your mind is because rick ross he came out with this album and it says i don't forgive god forgives and i'm like who does he think he is to say that i don't forgive god forgives he some people need to just humble themselves real quick because if you don't forgive and god forgave that person then you're just over here with this grudgment this 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 grudge for no absolute reason just like jesus said in matthews anger is just as bad as murder it's just as sinful as murder so even when i get angry i think of myself like this is just as sinful as murder why am i angry for why do i feel this type of way i don't need to feel this type of way i need to just give it to god because remember that we don't have to seek revenge god will be the person the person fighting our physical battles that we have with flesh and blood we don't have to be the ones doing that so we need to learn how to forgive okay and allow god to do the rest of the work and this is why a lot of people don't have a lot of light and they have a lot of darkness because that anger that hostility that's built inside of them turns into more anger then that more anger turns up to people killing one another and and you wonder why there's so much killings going on in this world and that's because people are full of hostility because they're full of darkness because they don't know the light and that light is jesus christ so that's why we have to do what we have to do in this world to be influencers of the world and influence people that's why every time i learn something in my scripture i come straight on live and i tell you guys because what good would it do for me to just keep the information to myself i will not be that's not me being obedient to what god wants me to do and god created us all as a purpose to share the gospel to keep bringing more people to the kingdom right so that's why I'm so big with social media because you can use social media to your full advantage and I'm using it to my full advantage to continue bringing people to the kingdom. I'm not using social media just to use social media. I use it to run my business and bring people to the kingdom, y'all. We got to use it to our advantage. It can reach a, a plethora of people at a faster rate just like there's five of you guys on this call today that's five more lives that are hearing the gospel you got to use it to your advantage just like i said be the influencer of the world don't be influenced by the world all right so now let's get into this it says is there an area of darkness in your life something that continually causes you fear such as your future or a challenge that you must face do not despair the father wants to relieve the dread that you feel by shedding light on your circumstances remember in the beginning it was god who spoke light into the existence let there be light and he did it before creating the sun the moon and stars this is because his very presence gives light not just physical radiance but spiritual illumination of course you may wish to overcome the uncertainty that you feel by seeking your own solutions just understand 
that the only God is light. It just understand that only God is light. Not you. You cannot be the solve the, the, the solution to your problem. You cannot solve these problems on your own. God is the light. And when you fight the darkness with more darkness, all you get is deep despair. Oh my gosh. Who needed to hear that? When you continue fighting the dark with more darkness, you're just going to get deep in despair. You can't fight the dark with darkness, y'all. You got to bring some light into that darkness. And who is the light? Who is the light, y'all? It's our Jesus. Okay? It says God wants to see, God wants you to see not just the path ahead. But the profound spiritual realities that are affecting your life. He is ready to help you. Just like the scripture says, God is knocking on your door. But guess what? God is a gentleman. He's not about to just let himself in. He, he going to respectfully lock. But guess what? You got to open that door to let him in. You have to let him in. He wants to help you. He's knocking right there at your front door right now. But some of y'all are not letting him in. And that's all he wants. Like I keep saying, he is respectful. He is a full gentleman out here. And he's not going to just bombard his way into your house. He wants to feel welcome. So just invite him on in, y'all. Okay? He is ready to help you. So when you sense the dark fears encroaching you, run to him. You better run to open that door. As soon as you start feeling the darkness, you better run to him. Okay? Because when he's your light, you will have nothing to dread. Okay? Let's close this out with prayer. First, I want to say just thank you, God. Thank you for your son. Right? Just set the tone, y'all. Let's just say thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because if it wasn't for you, Jesus, hmm, who knows where I would be, to be honest. Because once I accepted you as my Lord and Savior, once I, once I realized all the salvation that I received because God just simply loves me and I didn't have to do anything for that love, he created me, he created all of you out of the love of his heart. So we should be wanting to show him more. We should be wanting to spend this time with him. We should be showing him all the love that we got because he created us out of love. Literally. Okay? It says, Lord, free me from my anxieties. Lord, free everybody from their anxieties, their worries, their concerns. Shine your truth in my heart and in their hearts. And help me and them walk by your light. In Jesus' name, amen. Who received that word today? I so received that word today. I received it. I received it. I received it. Jesus is our light, y'all. We got to run to God. We got to run to him. We got to run to him. We got to run to him. We shouldn't be going through any darkness because you have the light that's within you. I can't. I'm blocked on Instagram, girl. That's why, it's, I, that's why none of my daily devotions have been posted for the past seven days. Because I keep doing them, but they can't, they, I can't post because I'm blocked on Instagram. So this will not be saved, unfortunately, until I'm unblocked. And tomorrow's my last day of being blocked. Whoop, whoop. So all my IG TVs will be saved again. But all my daily devotions are saved. If you go to my IG TV, there's a whole series that says daily devotions. That has all my daily devotions from when I started doing them. And they are powerful. So if you go to my series, there's a daily devotion and there's um, the fervent book read. For those of you guys that want to learn how to fervently pray, I did the book read to fervent in my series, in my TV series. So if you go to my IGTV and you see those series, you could definitely watch them. And I'm so grateful that they're up there because I've had so many people reach out to me that I didn't even know. Just go back and just rewatch the daily devotion. They're so powerful, y'all. So if ever you need a little word, just definitely um, check out those daily devotions, okay? Mm -mm. yes of course the enemy is not gonna block me from bringing this to the kingdom at all that's why i'm still here right now and it's on my facebook by the way i'm on facebook right now live so if you want to catch it just watch it on facebook but it's on my facebook live as well because i'm on facebook on my other phone over here so that's why i'd be looking in both cameras so the live is up on my facebook right now like i told you my goal here is to get the message out to everybody so i use 
all the platforms that I possibly can to get the word because I have audiences on social on Facebook and Instagram. So you guys have a great rest of your day. I'm about to go take a shower, get my day started, get dressed up and get cute and start promoting my products. I'm also going to read my Bible for about 30 minutes because I got to finish reading Acts. I got two chapters left, y'all. It's getting so good. Like, the other day, I swear I was watching a movie. That's how I be so into my word. Like, I'm over here, like, going to the bathroom. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I forgot to pause the movie. And then I was like, oh, dang. I was just reading my Bible. Because <laughs> it it's getting so good, okay? It's getting so good. Okay. But I think they got me blocked. You're blocked on Facebook? Dang. If, if this video could save, I'm going to be uploading it to my YouTube. So I'll send it to you. But alrighty, guys, you have a great rest of your day. Cheers, y'all.